Good morning from the Mud Hut. It's day three, it's about seven o'clock. Um, it was raining pretty much all last night. Thankfully, the Mud Hut was quite successful at keeping the water out. Must be well constructed because none came in. <laughs> um, we are aching a lot today. Um, just about to go and get breakfast and plan our route for the day. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me, this is the danger of slatted floors, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get all my legs out. <laughs> oh dear. So this is where we currently are, and we're just deciding, well we're going to here. We're just deciding whether we're going to walk this path, which is about 10, 11k we think or this path which is about 14-15k and the weather's not looking amazing so we think we might go the shorter one. On the path out of Thore we met so many donkeys. They were all carrying materials such as bags of cement for the works that were happening and there really wasn't that much space. That path along there is the one that we walked yesterday on the other side of the canyon. So how are your legs feeling? All right, a bit tired. Calves are hurting, I think, from all the uphill yesterday, but not too bad. Yesterday was tough, um, but today's been a bit easier so far, so fingers crossed, it's not gonna be too difficult. So this is a pipe that the workmen are putting in, and they've been blowing out all the rock on this side here with um, dynamite so that they can make the space bigger, dig the pipe in, um, so I think eventually there's going to be a much bigger path all the way around here. But this is where they've blown the hole and they've put in the pipe in. So yeah, the path is going to be a lot wider when they've finished, I guess. There's a path over there. It's a zigzag there, it's really faint, you can only just see it. That's what we came down on the first day when it started to rain and then we dropped down onto, onto that big road. It just looks like a vertical cliff face. <laughs> and that place down there is where we stayed on the first night with the hot springs. If you're going to do the Colca Canyon trek yourself, it's probably worthwhile me telling you what food we brought with us. So for our lunches, we brought some tins of tuna and bread and a packet of mayonnaise and some olives. And then for our snacks, we brought plantain chips, uh, roasted corn, raisins, cashew nuts, almonds, um, what else? Mangoes, oranges. Mangoes, oranges and cereal bars. All of which you can buy very easily and cheaply at the markets in Arequipa. So that oasis down there guys is where we think we are heading to spend the night tonight. It's called San Galle. We're going to be coming down that path to here and then tomorrow morning coming back up that path and round there. You can come down to this part of Colca Canyon San Gia, just in the day so you can probably see that path going up there. That's the path that you would take up and down in the day just to visit this part of the canyon. Uh, Cuidado! <laughs> I thought I was filming your death then. So we've come to a sign where we think you go down, but it looks ridiculously steep and yeah, just not really fancy in it. So we think we're going to try and find a different way. The next one doesn't look too much better. <laughs> But um, yeah, we're going to have to do it. How's that going for you? <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty tough, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Might take a while. <laughs> and there's definitely a path. Yeah. Yeah. Path. I think it gets less steep. Well, thankfully it got a lot easier after that initial bit. 
it's still steep but yeah at least you can stand up and walk properly <laughs> Yeah, this is a no-go. So we need to get over there. We can see from the top, that's where we need to do the other descent. But it's just full on cactus. <laughs> After getting pricked by quite a lot of cacti, we finally found a path. <laughs> this is our lunch spot, by the way. Pretty nice, right? We're on our last two kilometres for the day now, down into Sangaye. We're feeling pretty tired. <laughs> Um, it's also an oasis and we didn't really understand what that meant because an oasis is normally in the middle of the desert, right? Um, but we can already feel it getting much hotter as we're descending and it's getting really humid. So this is the bit that we're going to have to walk back up again tomorrow morning. See, that's going to be fun. Well, we're getting closer. Look at this. Is that something out of Avatar? Right guys, now we've just got to get down there. We'll cross that bridge. Eek! Seriously though, this scenery is just bloody beautiful. We've made it. We're at the bridge. Is it scary? realises. I thought once we crossed that bridge we were pretty much there but not only have we got to go uphill again, Jay says we are still a kilometre away. <laughs> Do you know how much further it is? Take that as a no. We finally made it to our next stop for the night, a place called Paraiso Los Palmeras Lodge. So the news is, this place, not only has it got cold beers, but it is absolutely stunning. Look at this. Salud. Salud. I mean, look at that. I'm definitely going in there after this beer. So that ended up being quite tough today, right? Yeah, that last bit was pretty tough. But what made it tough, the whole of the bit along the top, along the road, was actually pretty easy. But then it's because you can see the place that you're actually going to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then um, we thought that we knew the path as well. And then when we got lost, first time that we got lost, still we could see where we were going, but we were lost. It was ridiculous. And then the other bit that was difficult was you get down to the bottom and the bridge and you think you're here. And then yeah. you've got another kilometre or so to actually go to get to the place. So yeah, it's pretty difficult in the end. So it's not actually as warm as when we first arrived because we stopped walking. Jay's actually got his coat on, but I'm determined to go in this pool, so I'm going. Uno, go, three. Woo! It's nice. Cold? No, it's fine. Really? Honestly, it's really nice. Mm. You just come in, get your coat off. So 
most of the food that you're going to have in Corfu Canyon is actually vegetarian. There's not really much meat, so it's generally pastas and veg. Surprise, surprise, it rained again overnight, but it had totally cleared up by the morning. Day four, it's half eight, and we've just started the big ascent. As you can see, it's really sunny, so I think it's going to get pretty hot. <laughs> One thing that you will need to bring with you is a bit of grit and determination. We've been going for about half an hour, solidly uphill, and I'm really pretty pooped. And a lot of this terrain in the Coca Canyon is steep. Obviously, you're going down into the canyon, and then you're coming back up. So, you have to get ready for a little bit of hard work. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, that's what the problem is today. Yeah. Like my legs don't feel as tired as they did yesterday or the day before, but my head just is like, feels like there's a fire underneath my hat. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like there is as well. It's a face red. It is the same colour as your cap <laughs> and your t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling the heat. The hike that we're doing today from San Galle to San Juan de Chucho is quite a short one. It's only about five kilometres I think, so we should be there pretty early in the day. We made it to the top of the ascent, so we're out of the oasis now. And we've just been told that from here on out, it's downhill to where we're going. So hopefully my face is going to get less tomato-like. Oh, it's already cooler, have you noticed? Yeah, I know. The temperature's already dropped. Yeah, just as soon as we got over that lip. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why it's called an oasis. On this part of the trail, it's more because we're trekking the Colca Canyon in off season, in rainy season. But for the first three days, it was because we also went to more remote parts of the Colca Canyon. But there's just no one on the trails. Like we don't see anyone for hours until we get into the villages. It's really nice, it's really peaceful. All you can hear is Jay whittering on. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the water and the birds and yeah it's just really 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 nice and just for example in the place where we stayed last night in Sangaye in the oasis the hotel manager there told us that they can sometimes have up to 100 people staying when it's peak season so yeah it obviously looks a little bit different in fact he said that the pond looks like uh, what did he say the swimming pool looks like uh... Buffalo's watering hole. Yeah, that's it, not the pond, the swimming pool. <laughs> so when I said this was going to be an easy 5k today, it's turning out to be a little bit tricky. Unless it's just Jay reading the map wrong, because he's on map duty today. But we keep getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, not strictly true. I'm on map duty every day. We always get to our destination. And uh, I'd rather think what would happen if you were on map duty. <laughs> Basically, it's because it's rainy season and all the paths are quite overgrown because they're not being walked so much and it's quite difficult to find them. Is it like a path? We're kind of on the path then. I mean, that definitely looks like a path down there. Yeah. Just jump off. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to go down on your front. I don't think so. Whoa. So that's the path over there that we're supposed to be on. <laughs> but we're not quite sure how to get to it now. <laughs> Causing my own landslide. Your feet getting wet.
Sí. Bueno. Well done. We're back on the path. We must have took a wrong turn somewhere where we just didn't see the path. Um, but yeah, all's well that ends well. So it was all going smoothly again until we came to this. I'm just having a break while we assess which part of the river is going to be best to cross at. I think in dry season this is probably pretty dry, <laughs> but because it's been raining a lot the last few days, it's quite a lot of water. Jay found a big stick, so he's literally just testing the waters. Good work. So what we initially thought was going to be a 5k stroll in the park, whoa, yes. has turned into <laughs> the most exciting, adventurous, dangerous in some parts, <laughs> part of the entire trip. Yeah, I almost just fell to my death. Um, we've still got a kilometre left, so hopefully it's really boring from here. After saying that I'd had enough excitement for the day, I kind of lost again. Now we use this app called maps.me wherever we go because it allows you to download offline maps and they're usually really really good, very accurate. However, one of the things about being in a canyon is that it completely knocks your GPS signal AY so we don't really know when we're following the correct route and when we're not. And we don't know whether to trust the map. So it's a bit of trial and error. But we eventually made it to the village of San Juan de Chucho, our final overnight stop in the Colca Canyon. Okay, we've arrived at Posada Glorias. It's all right, isn't it? I've destroyed it already, I'm afraid. <laughs> standard, standard behavior. We've got here just in time for lunch. And for the main course, we've got alpaca. Tell me what it's like. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. This is probably some of the best food we've had on the Corker Canyon trek. The lady at this place really knows how to cook. Good morning, day five, 6 a.m. The alarm's just gone off. We've had a comfortable night's sleep despite it raining all night. Again, surprise, surprise. Sounds like it's pretty much stopping, so hopefully that's the case. By the way, we'll put links to all the places that we've stayed on the Colca Canyon trek in the description below. Okay, time to get up. From San Juan de Chucho, where we are at the moment, to Cabana Conde, where we are leaving from, it's a 9k, pretty much mostly uphill walk. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully it's not too difficult. I think the second part of it is going to be flat. The first part is going to be pretty difficult because mm. that's where we're going to be climbing out of the actual valley. Yeah, we're going to try and get there for lunchtime, hopefully. Um, now we've got breakfast, which looks amazing. Look at this. So yeah, let's dig in. This 
is the bridge we're heading down to this morning and then from there it's three hours up. So the big ascent starts. <laughs> We've read online that climbing out of the canyon is so hard it can make people cry. <laughs> so we've got plenty of water, plenty of snacks, we're just going to take it steady. For those of you that are going to be following our route in Coca Canyon, that's the town where we stayed last night, San Juan de Chucho, and there's actually two paths to it. So there's the one that we did that we had to cross that crazy river, but there's another one that comes down from that town there, Maleta, and there's a bridge somewhere over there, which will be a lot safer in rainy season. <laughs> four kilometre mark. Well, we don't know where he's come from, but we've got a hiking companion. Where is he? <laughs> what do you want to call him? Uh, shaggy. Shaggy? He just looks a bit shaggy, doesn't he? He's got dreadlocks. <laughs> than us, you know. <laughs> you see the snow? We've on that mountain top over there. What is he doing? Why is he up there? Oh, come down, mate. Shaggy. Oh, Christ. I can't look. One of the most incredible things about the Coco Canyon is that even though it is one of the deepest canyons in the whole world, pretty much the whole thing is at altitude. So even when you're at the lowest point, in the deepest valley, you're at over 2,000 meters. Where we're climbing to now, Cabana Conde, is actually at 3,300 meters. So what that means is that hiking is tough. There's a lot less oxygen up here, and it gets really difficult to breathe at times. Just to give you some idea of exactly how high that is, it's the kind of altitude that Olympic athletes do their training at. And in England, where we're from, there's not a single point in the land that's as high as that. Well, one mystery solved. We've just met a guy on the way down who told us that this dog, Shaggy, is actually from a hostel on the other side of the valley. And the bloke said to us that he often comes this way because he wants tourists to give him breakfast. So he's a really clever dog. We're not providing breakfast. We are gonna buy breakfast. That's where we stayed last night, right down there. San Juan de Chucho. Just following on from what Jay was saying about the altitude up here. The oxygen really is pretty sparse. I've got a stitch. <laughs> I have to keep stopping to get more oxygen into my lungs. It's pretty tough going. There are showers at the hostels in the Colca Canyon. However, they're pretty cold. <laughs> so we're really looking forward to a nice hot shower when we get back to our Arequipa later. But there is one thing for sure. This chap, Shaggy, he's a little worse than we do. <laughs> Even though the food has been surprisingly decent on this trek, what is the one thing that you would eat right now if you could have anything in the world? Um, a pint of Guinness would go down really well, first thing. And then a goat curry, nice Ooh. and spicy. In the Yorkshire pudding, in the Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> I think you've invented a new dish there. <laughs> We've lost Shaggy, 
well, not lost him, <laughs> but he's decided to go back down with a group of other tourists. Obviously he must have fancied his chances at breakfast more with them. I'm quite happy about it to be honest though because he kept going really dangerously close to the edge. He was only giving me a heart attack. The oasis from the other side. That's that path we went up and down to Zangaye. Just coming up on the one kilometre mark. I keep thinking we're nearly at the top. And then I'll look up. Guys, we made it. That's Kavana Conde over there. And no one cried. <laughs> we properly just looked out then. Literally just stepped off the trail, walking down the road to Kavana Conde. And there was a minibus coming in our direction with space heading to Chibai. So jump straight on. After five days of hard trekking in the Kolka Canyon, the traffic is so bad in Arequipa that we're now having to walk the three or so kilometers back to our hotel. We hope you enjoyed following along on our Kolka Canyon adventure as much as we enjoyed doing it. Do let us know in the comments what you thought. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and press that little alarm bell thing so that it tells you next time we post a video. We're not actually sure where we're heading next in Peru <laughs> at this moment in time. It will be in Peru though. Yeah, but tune in next time to see where we are. See ya. Bye. Oh,